there is the wrath of God. Already. Honestly, there is. There is the wrath of God. If you, can, if you can check the world that we live in right now, if you check the things that are happening in the world that we live mm. in, in right now, the world is given uh, to, to destruction. Yeah. Hi, and welcome to the T-World podcast with your host, with the most, Queen Rami. We are a home of life-changing conversations. We share life experiences. Let's share your journey of restoration. I love you. Hello once again. You are more than welcome to our podcast, The Tea World. If you are by any chance watching me for the very first time, my name is Queen Rami and do consider following me on all our social media platforms. Without any waste of time, I am not alone, as always, by now. <laughs> I am with the man of God, a mighty man of valor, Mr. Gift. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Queen Remy. I really appreciate it. It's a pleasure being here. Oh, yes. We really appreciate your time all the way from the United States of Pretoria. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, thank you very much, uh, again, Remy. And... So yes, um, as you mentioned, my name is Gift um, Tim Kulu. Um, I'm a pastor. Yes. Um, at Ecclesia Charismatic Church, um, the preacher of the gospel. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly, I'm a dad. I'm a writer as well, and uh, by the grace of God, um, have managed to publish some of my work. Okay. And yeah, so that that's brief about who I am. I love I that. <laughs> a man who is in tune with his calling. Yes. And your background, how did you grow up? And we will get into this part of you mastering your calling. Mm. Tell us a little bit about your background. Awesome. So I, I grew up in Makaya, you know, mm. um, before coming into the city. Mm -hmm. And uh, we grew up in a place where there wasn't really much of the materialistic things that we have now. Mm. And um, we were brought up with so much um, teachings of respect, uh, too much, so much teachings of family, mm. of honor, and of diligence, yes. you know, of, of being able to work hard and trying to achieve what you can achieve in life. And I remember mostly when growing up, um, we would always have chores and things to do. Mm -hmm. You know, you come back from school, you always have something to do. Yeah. You know, but pretty much I grew up like that. And when I was in high school, mm -hmm. uh, that's when I, I received uh, Jesus mm -hmm. as my Lord and Savior. Amen. We had we had uh, a pastor who came to our church and ministering to us. And from then, uh, my walk with God began there. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> so obviously at that time, you were still a bit young. So um, you, you got born again. How was that? Did you get too serious with God? <laughs> we all have a way of doing this thing in our young age mm. as teenagers. Take us through that. Yes, uh, I, I was pretty serious. Mm. Um, I was pretty serious. Wow. Uh, and <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> I was pretty serious. I remember we used to have um, something that we called LC, is it L LCO? LC yeah. yeah. Learners Christian Organization. Mm -hmm. And I was involved so much in that. And uh, some of the students were calling me pastor then. <laughs> Already? Yeah, because I was very serious. I, yeah. was, I was really serious. Brother, brr. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was, I was kind of serious. <laughs> okay. But, um, being a young person, mm. uh, it was never an easy journey. It's I never. don't lie to you. Mm. Um, when you're a teenager, you know, you're in the stage where you want to explore. You want, you want to, to, you know. Yes, you want to learn, you want to t try new things. Yeah. Your friends, you see your your your, your, your fellow students mm. um, are doing things that you want to do, you want to try, you want to see how this happens. And that became my journey. And mm -hmm. I think it became also a very important part of my journey with the Lord because I had to learn um, from a very young age yeah. um, about temptations, about challenges. And growing, growing up in a community where um, some people that are close to me were not born again. Mm. Uh, well, and I believe that some people that really um, were part of my life, even though they were... Uh, fellowshipping, um, some of them were not, most of them were not born again. Mm. We grew up in uh, African traditional churches. Yeah. So it, it's different from the charismatic churches that we we followed once we got born again. So 
that became a challenge. But mm. um, having learned and God helping me, um, I was able to navigate that stage, I can say. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, hearing what you are saying, you are telling us that even though the temptations were there, mm. somehow you did manage to master them. But let's talk about those young people who just got saved and they are not mastering either the flesh, either relationships. They want to explore, but the mastering part is not good. What can you say to them? You know, um, I can I can draw uh, from my own journey as well. Mm. Um, I had to learn from a young age as well that the journey uh, to eternal life is a journey that will always have some challenges mm -hmm. will only will always have some it's not a journey that will be easy correct especially if you're young people exposed to the world mm. that we're exposed to in south africa especially right now in the current south africa that we are living in mm. there is a lot of temptations yeah um you see a lot of young people um clubbing Mm. and which is becoming a norm. Mm -hmm. uh, clubbing from a very young age. Some as young as 16 years old, they're already clubbing. Mm. Uh, I don't know if maybe even younger than that. Mm. But that's where they're exposed to a whole lot of things. Of course, if clubbing, there's alcohol, mm -hmm. there is dating, there is sex, there is all of these things that there's nudity. There's yeah. all of these things that you get exposed to. Mm. Then also there is the big world of the internet mm. whereby I can be sitting here in my own house and I'm able to engage with people in other countries. I'm able to see content from all over the world. All over. Through the, the lens of the internet. And mm. by that, we see the rise of pornography. Social media has introduced quite a lot of temptations, mm. a lot of things that the enemy has used to lay young people to fall deeper and deeper into the trap of alcohol, drug abuse, mm. um, clubbing, um, sex, and all of those things. So I think the, a young person now needs to be a person who has role models, first yeah. of all, um, who will be able to guide and groom them in the ways that they should follow. I think that is the first thing. Mm. If you don't have people that are, are speaking life into you, then it becomes a problem. Mm. If you're a young person, you need to have people. The Bible says in the multitude of counsel, mm. there is safety. That's so right. the, the more you have people around you, don't isolate us. Don't get born again today. Mm. And then you start trying to figure it out on your own, like yeah. some of us did. You need to surround yourself with mentors, spiritual leaders, young people as well who are on fire for God. Mm. And that's how you begin to actually walk uh, this journey of mm. salvation together with God. Amen to that. Mm. And talking about role models, um, we are seeing a lot of things that are happening recently. Mm, mm, um, mm. A lot of exposure. Yes. A lot of um, the people that we deem as role models, yeah. now their scandals are coming out all over. Mm. But what are the dangers? Because we are from a black community also, let me mention this. So we honestly do not have a lot of role models in our homes. Mm. So what are the dangers of looking at total strangers pastors from over um, international, we call them our role models, yes. and then tomorrow you hear a scandal. What are the dangers? That is very unfortunate. Um, we have, of course, seen, and we continue to see, and I think it will be a trend that will continue to happen, mm. whereby we see, we find out a lot of things about certain people. Mm -hmm. Some of those things are criminal mm. and, and whatnot. So, unfortunately... As a young person, it's not always that you will have the foresight yeah. of knowing um, if a person is upright. Uh, because I think the deceivers or people who are deceiving other people mm. will try by all means to masquerade as people who are upright, mm -hmm. as people who are thoughtful, as people who, who mean well. Yeah. When, the, when the enemy comes to you, he will not come to you telling you that they want to steal, they want to kill, they want to destroy. Mm. They will come as if they want to give you life. That's right. they, they, they come as if they want to promise you, mm. um, they want to bring you to a place of destiny, a place of breakthrough, a place of purpose. Mm. And when, when you engage with such people, and you must understand um, the anatomy of uh, of deception, mm. right? It starts with temptation. So you look at this person, you, 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 
you are inspired by them. Yeah. You look at them and see, like, this person is really moving in miracles. This person is moving in the prophetic ministry. Mm-hmm. Or this person is simply a great teacher of the word. Mm-hmm. And you're inspired by their, their, their message. You know, they bring you hope. They bring inspiration. And simply that brings you closer to them. You want to be close with such person. Mm. But unfortunately, um, we are living in the world whereby people can be one person in the pulpit or in front mm. of the camera and another person behind <laughs> the camera. It's, 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 it's like true. that. Isn't mm. it the enemy says that, uh, he speaks about wolves that um, are, are clothed in sheepskin. Mm. So when you're looking at that, you'll be sure that you're looking at a sheep. Mm. But when when you begin to listen, you come closer and you begin to inspect, mm. then you begin to realize that this, it does not have the characteristics of a ship. Mm-hmm. So you end up finding yourself in a place where you are confused between what you see and actually what you perceived in the beginning. That's so right. young people should uh, should learn the spirit of discernment. Mm. We need to actually have the spirit of discernment. Mm. You know, especially when you're going to follow people on social media and people that we don't really have a prior knowledge of understanding of where they come from mm. and how they got where they are, right? Mm. Because you can look at someone today who's driving a Bentley and you may think that, uh, you know, this person, you know, they work hard. <laughs> but you don't know, it could be blood money. It, it could, could be, be all drugs. Of these so mm. you need to actually have discernment. And that's what we need to encourage in young people. The Spirit of the Lord does not require you to be old mm. for you to start operating the gifts that's of the Holy true. Spirit. So you need to actually have a relationship with the Holy Spirit to say, mm. God, guide me. If there is any relationship, any prospect uh, mentorship thing that I need, I want to be involved in, protect me from harm. Protect me That's from true. that. Because there are people's lives who get destroyed mm. out of that. So mm. much that they end up leaving the faith. Mm. Uh, some commit suicide and some Ish. fall into depression because of these things. Because we're talking about things of rape, um, child abuse, mm. uh, molestation, and all of those things. Mm. It's its really damning um, events that happen to, to, to most young people out there in the name of the faith. Mm. And so that's why we need to be alert. Always teach our young people about how to protect themselves and how to pray for the spirit of discernment as well. I like that. I like that. But can we take it back to the issue of understanding a call upon somebody's life mm. and who they really are. Remember, salvation is a journey. Yes. And the Bible says, work out your own salvation, mm. you know, with all trembling and fear. That's you see a powerful man of God on the pulpit, and then when they get off, they're still struggling with the lust of the flesh. When, when sisters are dancing there at church, they're already... <laughs> Unfortunately, it's a reality that That's we true. are dealing with in the body of Christ. Yeah. So where do people see the gap? You spoke about discernment, yes. but what more can people look out for? Are we telling people to be um, journalists and investigate our <laughs> men of God? <laughs> you know, um, the Bible says we must test the spirits. Amen. It teaches us test the spirits. Mm. So testing the spirit, um, in, you need to investigate as to find out what kind of a spirit is this person operating from? Yeah. So it's very true what you're saying. Mm. That, you know, in the church, there can be temptations, right? right. Um, the difference between your call and your character mm. of who you are, because your character is who you are. Yes. Your call, your, or rather your calling, is who you are supposed to be. Yes. Or who you, who you have been designed to become. So... When you are born in the world, you have the flesh. Mm. Apostle Paul says, the flesh cannot be saved. Mm-mm. So it is still has its own lusts. Mm. It, still has, it still has its own weaknesses. Mm. So the flesh itself, no matter how much you get, the, self, the, the flesh will never be saved. It cannot be born again. That's, That's right. why corruption breeds corruption. Mm. And corruption will be destroyed at the end of the day. And it speaks about the flesh. Mm. But the flesh will not inherit the kingdom of God. And therefore, it will be destroyed. But the spirit, the soul, it will be born again. It will be renewed. That's our process. Even though um, our bodies are decaying day by day, mm. we are renewed in the inner man oh, continually. Yes. So we, for you to become a man of God, you have to have a calling from God. Mm. And your calling is greater than you, unfortunately. Your calling comes before the foundations of the earth. And look yeah. at the book of Jeremiah, 
God speaks to a young prophet. He says, Jeremiah, before I formed you I, in your mother's womb, mm. I knew you, right? I called you, I ordained you oh, a yes. prophet. So uh, uh, Jeremiah was ordained before he was even born, mm. before he was conceived in his mother's womb. So his, his calling was perfect, was there. Mm. But Jeremiah will come into a place, into a world that is not perfect. Yeah. A world, he will come through the womb of a woman, mm. possessing all the characteristics of the flesh, which is anger, you know, and mistakes and all of these things mm. as a human being should. Uh, so if you're in the flesh, you'll face those things. But we need to then learn to discipline ourselves. That's where discipline comes because That's character true. is developed. Mm. You cannot develop your calling. Mm. Your calling is perfect it's a and done complete. Deal. Mm. But you can develop your character to, 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 to meet the standard of your calling. Mm. So that's why Apostle Paul said, then, therefore walk in the manner of the calling that mm. you have received. You must walk in the manner of the calling that you have received. So mm. it is then a responsibility. It's giving us a responsibility. It says, you are a woman of God. You are a man of God. Mm. Your responsibility is to walk in the manner of this calling that you have received. Yeah. But how does that happen? It comes through discipline. Mm. It comes through disciplining yourself. You're not going to wake up tomorrow and be a saint. You're That's not going right. to wake up tomorrow and... If, especially if you got born again later in your life. Mm. You have experienced a lot of things. You have seen a lot of things. You have encountered a lot of things in, mm. in, in, in your life. And those strongholds, I call them strongholds, mm. will always try to bring you back and draw you back to a place that you used to be. Mm. But you must always discipline yourself through the word of God. Yeah, you know, Because that's where discipline is mastered, through mm. the word of God, understanding what the word of God says. What is it that God wants? Oh, and yes. what is that God desires from me? as an individual because mm. when when we have a, a, a mandate mm. as, a, as a church as a children of God to be faithful to God mm. more than anything so disciplining yourself in the word of God following what the word of God says you're not doing it for anyone else yeah you are doing it for yourself so yes your calling and your character are two different things mm. you can have a perfect calling and an imperfect character yeah it happens right mm. and the, you can have a great character and have no calling. <laughs> it's also possible. Yeah. Right? So you see people who are highly gifted, highly anointed, because the gifts of God are without repentance. Correct. People who are highly gifted, mm. but their characters are faulty, and the enemy is able to then take advantage of that. So it becomes the responsibility of the man of God, the servant of God, the woman mm. of God, to advance themselves in the uh, uh, dimensions of their character mm. so that they can be able to walk in a manner that is fit for their calling Eish. to represent the kingdom of God in righteousness. Amen. Mm. You touched on a lot, but there is this one that is busy in my spirit. <laughs> when it comes to a lot of men of God, there is this specific area where the devil knows I've got them. And it's in the area of relationships. It's a you mess. know, yeah, you find that, you know what, this man of God, when Zakala. he preaches, you know, we hear him, we hear. <laughs> Zakala, but we then there is this thorn in the flesh, you know. Mm. Take us through your journey. Is it not one of the. <laughs> Yes, I'm going to put you on the spot, but let's find out. There's somebody out there, there's a man of God out there who might be struggling with the same thing where they love the Lord, they know they are called, but when it comes to relationships, they can't stop going from one sister to the other. Um, some are married, but they still do things behind closed doors. Let's talk about that. Yes, um, it's, it's, it's a very important uh, topic, Yeah, especially in... In such a time that we live in. Oh, yes. Um, you know, where a lot of people, they really want to pursue the Lord. They really mm. want to pursue their callings. They really want to pursue the will of God for their lives. Mm. But you speak about a thorn in the flesh. Apostle Paul uh, mentions those specific ways about mm -hmm. a thorn in his flesh. Even though, I, I, don't, I think... Uh, purposefully so he doesn't go into details mm. as to what kind of a thorn could be he, different yes. it could be a disease yeah. it could be it mental could be, yes. so he doesn't know? really go into details and scripture mm. is silent in that matter whereby he says i prayed unto god three times mm. to remove this mm. thorn right and but said god then responded and said um my grace is sufficient for mm -hmm. you and my strength is made perfect. is made perfect in your weaknesses yeah. so god acknowledges therefore that there are weaknesses mm. it's one thing then when god acknowledges he said that i have you have weaknesses mm. right 
and but there is grace that mm-hmm. is perfect in the in your weaknesses and in my journey with the lord i have experienced quite a lot of things even in eras of relationship being mm-hmm. one who was married before mm-hmm. I, i have a lot of experiences in that area of my own um journey mm-hmm. whereby um i found myself in a place whereby um I'm not working in a manner that is right for my calling. Yeah. And uh to a point whereby I divorced, mm. right? And you 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 find yourself not only yourself but a lot of other people, other many servants of God mm. who who are in that space whereby they find themselves um find that maybe they were unfaithful to mm. to to their wives. Um I was at some point mm-hmm. um where I was not faithful and and all of that. So but it is the challenges then that you face as a person. Mm. Character. As I'm saying, it comes back to character. Character, character the ability to say no. Mm. Uh the ability to 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 exempt yourself mm. from situations that manipulate your character, mm. that um amplify your weaknesses, mm. right? For example, if 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 you have a situation with Let's say you are a flirtatious person. Mm. Uh, it's part of your character. You're a flirtatious person. You should then try and excuse yourself from situations whereby you are aimlessly chatting to people on social media because mm. eventually it will lead uh, to a place whereby you are flirting with you people. Know? And yeah. sometimes people that you should be ministering to, right? Um, or the conversation might start as ministering to that person mm. but because your character is flawed mm. you may end you up in a place whereby you yes you know? mm. so of which that is i'm bringing that to the fore because that is one of the areas in of which i found myself challenged yeah. earlier in my ministry i found myself challenged being young at the time very mm. young i was young i was in my 20s mm. at the time and finding myself in that place mm. where now um i'm 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 trying to help this person. Ish. But I'm finding myself in a place where now I'm drawn to liking this person and wanting to talk pursue. other things, pursue mm. even this person. And so that challenges uh, your ministry and and limits your impact in the lives of people. And not only that, but it brings distrust. Yeah. Whereby people cannot distrust. I'm not talking about your your wife only. Mm. I'm talking about the church, the body of As Christ cannot trust you. People cannot trust you. They, they have that expectation that should I go and uh, consult with this man of God, no matter how anointed he is. Mm, but there is. there is that element whereby I might find myself now having to deal with someone pursuing me. Ish. So it's 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 an issue of character. Then it comes to the issue of uh, sexuality. Now sexuality mm. is sin, mm. right? Not sexuality is not sin itself, but mm. um adultery, a fornication mm. is sin. And you see a lot of leaders now falling into that trap of fornication because mm. it starts as temptation, yeah. flirting. And that's why the apostle Paul says, remove from you whatever that looks like sin. Yes. Is it whatever in, 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 I, I like it in, in the Zulu Bible it says uh susani gini gonke obonakala nje ngesono yeah so it, for, don't wait for something to to, to actually be Ish. fully fledged sin Ish. but if if it looks like sin mm. then remove yourself from it or remove it from your life mm. right isn't it that, that Jesus teaches us that if your hand causes you to sin mm. rather cut it off mm. Uh, right it's better for you to lose a hand than for the whole body to burn in hell that's what mm. Jesus teaches us so with sexual is with sexual sins it doesn't start with a man of god sleeping with church members yeah i don't think it starts with a man of god as uh, uh, cheating on his wife mm. it starts with these small things whereby you are flirting with people mm. whereby you are pursuing people yeah. whereby you are looking at uh, pe- women or if you are a woman and looking at men lastfully mm. right and and the scripture says we need to have a uh, discipline yeah. surrender our bodies as a living sacrifice oh yes so it starts with that because mm. sin for it to be become sin it starts as temptation if you fall into that t- mm. t- that temptation then it becomes sin and it leads mm. to destruction 
That's right. right. So you'll find yourself, and what people do, they're, they're unable to see that because you'll still be performing miracles. Yeah. People will still be falling. Without repentance. You'll, you'll still be <laughs> prophesying, accurately mm. so. And you'll still be dividing scriptures and preaching Eish, powerfully I'm so. I'm telling you. Because now, that is a whole different part from your character. Mm. Right? That's why not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter. Mm. the kingdom of heaven. That's true. Because our mandate as a church is that we want to enter the kingdom of God, right? We are not preaching because of church membership. We are mm -mm. not going to church because of all these things. Our mandate is one and one only, that when the Messiah returns, mm. our names should be written in the book of life. Yes. So when you speak about sexual sins, fornication, they lead to destruction mm. for your soul and also for the, for, for the church. Because now the greater burden is on you as a man of God because... The, the, the Bible says, who unto you whom yes. sin came by? Yeah. So if you are the one who leads others into temptation, let's say yes. you win a soul today, tomorrow you want to sleep with that person, mm. then who unto you? Because yes. not only will you be judged, but you'll be judged double. Because hey. God says, of you I will require the blood mm. of those people. That, the you know, blood is in your hands. <laughs> exactly. See, mm. So um, I, at, 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 at an earlier stage of, of, of my ministry, being a young person who's married, because um, I, I got married very young. Yes. Very mm. young. And remember, I, I had been following the Lord and I've been serving the Lord from my teens. Mm. And now I'm in my early 20s. I'm married to a beautiful wife. Mm. And I'm in ministry. And now suddenly there's a lot of temptations that yeah. are coming and presenting themselves to me. Mm. I'm suddenly in a position whereby... Because, you know, temptation comes in so many forms. Yeah. Um, if you are not easily, easily tempted yourself, the enemy will always find areas where you are weak, mm. where you find yourself weak. You know? I would like to, mm. to give an example on that, that the enemy would never tempt me with alcohol. Mm. Exactly. He knows I don't have a relationship with that. That's but true. he can come in a form of pride, in a, you know, mm. whatever. So we need to look out for those type of things. Mm. You know, I want us to now touch this one way. Judgment is going to start in the house of the yes. Lord. You know, we are talking about ushering the second coming of Jesus Christ. And I don't think the state of our church, we are ready to usher the king of kings. Amen. That is true. Yeah. And actually that should, um, that should break our hearts so much because mm. Jesus says we must present his bride spotless. Spotless. Unfortunately, the bride is not spotless at this point. Eish, it no. has been defined. <laughs> it has really been defined mm. because the those who have been entrusted with leading the church yeah. are the ones who are you know perversing the church. You know, people, servants of God, we we, we briefly touched on the, the issue of sexual sexual immorality in the church. In the church. Whereby people are sleeping with one another, people are sleeping with other married people, mm. you know, people are having orgies and all of these things mm. and whatnot. Not only that, there, there, there is a lot of things that we see in the church whereby people are not honest, mm -hmm. even financially as so. People, they are, they, are, they, are, they are using the gospel for personal gain. Mm. And that in itself is a red flag and it's a huge warning because we are not called for that. Yes, as much as the church can take care of its leaders, and it should, mm. uh, but we should be aware then of the spirit of greed yeah. that has entered and grasped the church. Whereby now there are people, for you to see them one-on-one, -on -one, for them to give you a simple counseling and prayer, mm. you, have to pray, you have to pay certain amounts of money Ish. for you to have that kind of assistance. Mm. There are some people in the church whereby if you need prayer, you need prophecy, you pay. If you need a certain blessing, there's amounts that are paid. Mm. Like now, uh, you, you are studying a new year, you'll be told that it's 2024, so you need to pay 2024 rand as a seed. <laughs> You know, oh, they such. Oh such. my God, it's deeper than that. <laughs> it happens. It, uh. it happens. I'm telling you, it happens. And <laughs> you'll see, uh, even on the comment section, I'm sure people will tell you. <laughs> that it happens. And some of them people have taken out those uh, first oh fruits my like God. that. Whereby you pay money. Mm. You pay. People pay as much as 7,000, 12,000, mm. 10,000 to, 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 to receive some types of blessings. Ish. You know, now we are selling everything in the church. Uh, we have opened um, a supermarket mm. in the church whereby... Um, you know, it started with selling Bible, then it became speak stickers, T-shirts, clothes, and all of the things. Yes. And we are referring to the Bible to say that clothes were taken to the sick when Apostle Paul was praying for people, and those people were healed. Apostle Paul did not sell those clothes. Mm. That's where the difference That's is. That's the difference. Apostle Paul did not sell mm -mm. those clothes. 
right? So the apostles did not charge for that, you know? So it was a free gift from God. Those mm. that are freely you have received and freely you Mashiri. must give. Mm. So what happens then to a person who, who has no money? Ish. What happens to the poor? Because Jesus says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Mm. And he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. So what about the poor? In this generation, the poor Whereby are not considered. I'm a prophet of God. Ish. And I'm saying to you, for you to sit down with me, mm. I need 2,000 rands up front. Mm. What about the poor? Are we saying that the poor cannot receive counseling, cannot Ish. receive prayer? Are we saying the poor cannot receive breakthrough? Mm. So we are creating so much celebrity statuses in the church. Pride has entered into the house of mm. God, whereby people see themselves better than other people. Ish. People see themselves bigger than other people. And God is against that. Very. And God is against, and God is not for that particular mm. church. That's why in the kingdom of heaven, you will be, we will be surprised the people that we will see mm. that who have, who have been given crowns. We think that we will see these uh, celebrity pastors and bishops, but actually what we'll see, we'll see humble people who followed God in humility and in obedience. Mm. So that's why the issue of having a title is very difficult because when you have a title, you are putting yourself at a much more risk of judgment because yeah. it says, you know, for you, pastor, pastors and leaders, they will be they will they will be charged even double. Double, bigger. right? So just imagine being charged double. Mm. So it was better for you not to even be a pastor mm. than for you to, to want that title and then mm. having that title to misuse it. Then we are not talking only about finances and sex. I, I mentioned the issue of pride. Yes, you know, abuse of power, mm. right, and deception. And all of these things that are happening, witchcraft mm. that is happening in the church. Oh, yeah. Witchcraft. There are sacrifices that are happening in the church That's now. That's right. Where people are slaughtering goats, uh, slaughtering mm. cows and whatnot. Pigs. Mm. And pigs and all of these things. And are happening right in our church, in our churches, where people are doing candles, uh, things like that. And these are rituals that people do. And some of them, they do them blindly. Mm -hmm. But some of them, they do them while away. Mm. That doesn't... We must look at it in both ways. There are those who do those things blindly because mm. they, see, they, they see their spiritual father on mm. TV mm. doing something like that. And they think that is something. They don't search the scriptures. Ish. That's why it's when you're anointed and you're not really matured in the things of God, you just follow whatever, mm. right? But the Bible speaks about a church that was wise, that whenever the word was shared with them, they went back home and they searched the scriptures That's to search right. if those things were so. So we must not follow blindly in this mm. season. We must not follow blindly because we are coming to the last days. Um, the Bible speaks about the signs of the end times where mm. pe people will be lovers of themselves and oh, yes. lovers of money and all of those things. They will, not, they will not pay attention to sound doctrine. Mm. That's what the Bible says. So we are living those. All the signs, they are there. They are there. And I love that because as we are seeing the signs, we need to understand that to him whom much is given, much more is required. Mm. So I'm taking it to this. I saw a post on your Facebook mm. status. Mm. Mm. By the way, viewers at home, make sure you follow Mr. Gift on all his social mm. media platforms. He will give us all the handles at the end of our session. And we are also sponsored by the Scent Studios. Follow them on all their social media platforms. So on your post, you wrote something that challenged me. I was yes. like, you know what? We need to talk about this. Mm. There is definitely a call to repentance. Yes. You know, you, you mentioned the fact that God is not happy with the church. Let, let's take it into... God is not happy with the church. At all. Um, Queen Remy. Mm. God is not happy. And you must look at how much God loves the church. Oh, yes. You, you must look at how Jesus loves the church. Mm. Now, um, let, let me use a parable. You are a husband. Mm. Yeah? You are a husband. You have a beautiful wife mm. that you have shared and purchased with your own blood mm. because the church is the bride of Christ. And now you have people that you have called and you have appointed to look after your bride. Mm. And these people, they start perversing your bride. They start abusing your bride. Yeah. They start deceiving your bride. They mm. start trying to win the heart of the bride to themselves Eish. instead unto you. Mm. So they want to take away the heart of the bride from you yeah. so that the bride can love them mm. and give them and pursue them and worship them. So imagine yourself as a groom 
and you are sitting there, you are looking at your bride being abused, perceived, deceived, and lost. Mm. And the, 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 the love of your bride begins to grow colder mm. towards you. Now suddenly your bride no longer wants you, Ish. no longer worships you, no longer wants to spend time with you, yeah. no longer desires you, no longer follows your will. Imagine in yourself as, as like that. So I'm saying God is not happy with the church because God is looking at his bride mm. and he's saying, my bride, whom I have purchased with my own blood, is now following false gods, Eish. is now follow, following um, other men, mm. is now pers you know, being pers perverse in the world and is lustful yeah. and is full of greed and is full of pride and has excused herself from me. Mm. Right? And we see by all these things that are happening in the church. So God is really not happy about that. It's, it's funny because right now people are preaching this lovey dovey gay God mm. that we oh are Oh my seeing. God. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this God mm. who, whom everything goes. Eish. There's this and God who everything father. goes. You know, his grace is so much that he really doesn't care about us. Eish. And and honestly, it's like being a parent. Mm. Um, if you're a parent whom you cannot discipline your, your child, you don't love your child. You don't. Honestly. Mm. So now God is not happy with his house and with his church because of these things, we have allowed thieves to come into the church. The Bible teaches us about uh, the church that has an itching ear. Mm. It says they will build up for themselves, or the other, uh, is it King James, he said that they will pile up mm. for themselves their own teachers, yeah. false teachers, who will preach what they want to hear, tickling mm. their ear. So now we have choice. I mean, every corner there's a church now. Every in my in my street, maybe there's two churches, mm. if I'm thinking correctly. I think there's two. And yeah. there's churches in the other streets as well. Sure. So people are piling up their own teachers. If this one does not teach what I want, I'll go to the next one who will mm. tell me that staying in my sin is okay. Mm. And I will go to heaven. God will forgive us either way. But the Bible clearly says that you will not inherit the kingdom of God, yeah. right? It speaks about in the book of Galatians chapter 5, it speaks about, the, you know, the fruits of the flesh. Mm. It says, you know, the adulterers, the fornicators, the murderers, the liars, says they will not enter the kingdom of heaven. And At it's in all. the New Testament. Mm. We think that is Old Testament. It's in the New Testament. It says they will not mm. enter the kingdom of God. They will not enter the rest of God. Yeah. So as much as there's, there's grace that is covering the church, the grace should lead us to the place of if this person loves us so much. If this God loves us so much, mm. then it should lead us to repentance. Yeah. So there is a call for repentance. And this repentance is a call of love. Mm. It's a call of love to say that God is not happy with the church and the church will fix its ways because we do, know, we, we do not want to lose the love of the Father. That's right. We do not want to experience the wrath of God. No, we because don't. now... There is the wrath of God. Already. Honestly, there is. There is the wrath of God. If, right. you can, if you can check the world that we live in right now, if you check the things that are happening in the world that we live mm. in, in right now, the world is given uh, to, to destruction. Yes. Even Jesus himself, you know, when he speaks, when he speaks about um, uh, Judas Iscariot, he says, he speaks about the one who was given to destruction. Mm. So God is able to give to destruction. Mm. So there are people now who are living thinking that they are following God, yet they are doing their own things, but God has given them to destruction. Mm. Uh, right? Their ticket is, really, is already signed. Ish. And God is calling their church to repentance. And this repentance needs to be sincere. In the book of Chronicles, in 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, it says that, if my people mm. who are called by mm. my mm. name. So there Ish. are people who are called by his name. Mm. What is his name? You know, he is Christ, the anointed one, who are called. For us who say we are called you are by his name. Mm. We are called of God. We are children of God. We are yes. born again. We are spirit-filled. We have all these texts that we put ourselves on. Mm. You know, we are chosen. We are chosen generation. Peculiar people. Mm. You know, called forth for his glory. Yes. We are the church of the firstborn. <laughs> we, are the, we are called ourselves the sons of God. Mm. Right? But it says, if you are really called by my name, you need to humble yourself. Yes. You know, repent and leave your wicked ways. He says, mm. you must leave those wicked ways. Mm. And then, only then will I hear Mm. There are prayers from heaven. Mm. Only then will I hear. So sometimes maybe we are praying and we are praying to a God who really does not hear yeah. us because we have given ourselves to the lust of the flesh, mm. to the things of the world, west in the pulpit and in the church, whereby, you know, we, we see stories. I've heard stories whereby, about this other man of God 
mm. whom Sundays he would demand that all the offerings should be taken and put in his office. Right? Okay. And, and this this gentleman has a, a side chick in the church. Mm. So then they would go after service, they would go and blow the money and, and guest houses. Hard work. And you, know? you know? So the church is giving, Ish. but that money is spent you know, on side chicks, mm. on alcohol. Now there's the, the pastors who come, especially they love South Africa a lot. They'll <laughs> come to South Africa in Hetfield, you know, they'll go to 012 in Brooklyn and all of these things. And they'll spend money on on, 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 on slay queens, mm. uh, popping champagnes and all of this. Men of God. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about men of God. Yeah. Men who are famous. I'm not talking about a, a pastor who has two members in the corner there. I'm talking about famous men mm. who are followed by multitudes, who are trusted by many. Yes. And who do that. And publicly so. There's mm. no shame there. You must understand that these people have given themselves to destruction. But then the question is, why do we follow them? Mm. Why do we follow them? I just want to emphasize on the fact that not all foreign pastors, yeah, it's most of them, but not all. It's very important. Okay, I want us to touch on talking about pastors and all. Idol worship. Mm -hmm. There is a whole lot of idol worship that we need to repent on as the body of Christ. I mean, it can be in a form of honoring and loving our pastors in such a way that it does not please God. Now mm. we worship our pastors. Yes. Not only our pastors, but we worship our marriages. We mm. worship the children mm. that God gave us. We worship money, our jobs, our salaries. What is the gap between that? The sin of idol worship is one of the sins that God hates so mm. much. He hates, he hates it so much that it was in the fundamental laws mm. that God gave to the children of Israel that thou shalt have no other God Eish. besides me. So which means the moment you have another God, yeah. it, it is one of the sins that you cannot commit. Mm. You shall not have Eish. any mm. other God, nor shall you worship any other besides me. Mm. It's very specific. He does not want to be... It says, I, the Lord God, I'm a jealous God. Yeah. I do not share my glory. Mm. You understand? So that's the foundation we need to look at God first. Mm. He is jealous in that. He does not share his glory. Yeah. And he does not want to be compared with another God. He doesn't want to be put aside with other gods. Sure. Now, having established that, Queen, we need to then look at this. Idol worship begins from self. Mm. Once, we, once we elevate ourselves to a level of becoming smaller nyana gods Eish. <laughs> in the church. Mm. Then it becomes a problem because now God is using you, Queen. Eish. You know, people are, are falling in your church. You know, immediately when you, when you get out of your message space, people start falling. Yeah. You know, when you start holding the microphone, you know, the blind are seeing. Mm. You know, the deaf are beginning to hear. People are standing up from wheelchairs. We are prophesying the future. We are prophesying, you know, uh, the results of Forex and Bedway and Lotto and all of these things. You can predict marriages and weather and precedence. Mm. You can do that. You are anointed, highly anointed of God. Mm. Then you start to have a seed within, within you that... I am capable. This is me. I can do this. Mm. Once you have the, 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 the issue of I can or I am, you know, once you have that, then the enemy rejoices because yeah. he knows that he has won you. Yeah. He's done with you because with you is no longer Christ that is doing the work. Mm. It is you. Pride of life. Yes, mm. I can do this. You know that I can I can raise people. I can do this. It's mm. no longer Christ that does the work in you. Very it scary. is you that that you know you no longer see the one who is the giver of the gifts. Yeah. You begin to see the gift that is in you and you see yourself because mm. you are puffed up now. You are preaching messages that people have never heard before. He said, But I'm so <laughs> smart. I'm so intelligent. <laughs> I'm a god. I've Ish. heard people calling themselves gods. You mm. know, we give ourselves titles that are not even there in the Bible. Mm. You know, we have become generals. Mm. We become generals. We become superintendents. Mm. You know, <laughs> that's, that's what we have done because we have elevated ourselves so much yeah. that we want to give the impression that we are bigger than thou. Mm. We are stronger, bigger, more righteous, more superior, more powerful, more richer than the next person, and even than God himself. So that, sure. that becomes a problem then, because it breeds idol worship. Once we worship right. ourselves, we expect other people to worship us. us. Mm. Because how dare you not bow down to me mm. when I am so powerful? Yeah. How dare you not address me in a certain way. How do you call me by my name? How you do know? You, how Ooh, dare you? My God. How dare you? 
you can meet a man of God and, 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 and in a restaurant or in mm -hmm. town and whatever, and they, they expect you to bow down <laughs> and you cannot even greet them. <laughs> you cannot even greet them mm. at all. A, a mere greeting, you can't. Ish. Because there's this status that we have built around ourselves that we are big. We mm. want to be big. You know, people are obsessed with being big. Mm. People are obsessed. Oh, and we should obs be, be, be obsessed more to be little, to be small. Because now the disciples, they, they, they had a pride at some point. Mm. Because they were following Jesus. They were, people wanted to be close to Jesus, but they couldn't. Mm. But these guys were privileged that Jesus called them one by one. one. By Sing, one. He pointed single-handedly and said, yeah. guys, follow me. And now it comes to a point, they say, Jesus, we've been following you, my guy. And now... Tell us, since we've been following and serving you, amongst us, the disciples, who will be greater mm. in the kingdom of God? Mm. Whom have you chosen here mm. to be great in the kingdom of God? You understand the obsession with being yeah. great? Then Jesus does not respond to them. He goes and fetches a child. Mm. And he brings the child before them. And he says to them, unless you change. Yeah. Look at that. Like, <laughs> unless you change, there's a call for repentance mm. because the word repentance means to change. Yes. So I, we can say, unless you repent and become like this child, you will not even see the kingdom of God. For you, you are worried about being big. Mm. You will not even see it. You're worried about being great. Who said you're going to be in the kingdom to begin with? Mm. You have to become like this child. Mm. So now we have to look at the child. How is the child in this call of repentance? A child is someone who is humbled. Very. They have no sense of self. Yeah. They have no sense of self-worth. Mm. To them, Pastor Paul, with all these things, I count them useless. Yes. Nothing. None. Right? So it said, become like this child. Don't mm. have the, the self self-importance, false, you know, identity that you are building for yourself. Because yeah. that's where cults are made. That's how that's the that, that's where cults are formed. Mm. When someone thinks that they are better than other people, yeah. When someone feels that they are too important to preach in a rural area, mm. they are too important to to ride in a taxi. Ish. They are too important, you know, to to have their picture with another person's picture in in a poster. They, are <laughs> they must be the bigger. Yes, they, <laughs> they must be the bigger one in, uh. in all of that. So they are too important to mm. sit in a in, in a normal chair in a church. Mm. Right? If you're inviting them, now you have to buy new chairs yeah. or a new chair for them. Because there's this sense of self-importance that people have built. But you need to be humbled. Mm. If you're going to be a person who's going to usher the last trumpet and the coming of the Messiah, yes. you need to be so humbled and know that. Actually, I can say that get over yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell them they're at home. <laughs> yeah, definitely just get over yourself. <laughs> But we know that you can sing the heavens down. Mm. We know that you can pray. Because not only pastors, there are people who are anointed in the ministry of singing. singing. Mm. They become celebrities Look in the me. church. <laughs> when I sing, everyone stands. Yes. Oh God, help no, us. But, you know, you, 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 you're a musician, you, you, you are a pianist, you are a prayer warrior. There are mm. people we know them. They are MCs, they are prayer yeah. warriors. You know, you are, you are the person who has a gift. Mm. But do not let your gift take you to hell. Yes. That is very sad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I like what you are saying, the way you are putting everything in context. So let's look at the difference between honoring a man of God, because the Bible says give honor where it is due. Yes. When do you now notice this is now normal honor? As a pastor in your own church, you begin to see that no, I'm being worshipped. Mm. How do you deal with that? Excellent. I think that's a perfect question because we need to also bring balance into this. There should be. Right? Mm. We need to bring balance. The Bible says, you know, we, not, we need to honor yes. those who serve. It said, in fact, those who serve in the temple, they are worth double honor. Double. Mm. Now, what is honor and what is worship? Mm. No, honor it's in itself is giving to someone their Jews. Yeah. Right? If you are a leader... It, it is your Jews to be honored, mm. right? It, it can be honored financially, yeah. right? We honor you financially. Mm. And that's what the Bible says. We must not, you know, mice and ox where it labors. Mm. So which means even those who preach in the temple, we need to bless them. In, mm. in, yes, they need to eat. They need their children and all of those things, regardless of whether they work or not, or mm. they're in the corporate or not. But honor needs to be there, right? And honor speaks about respect. Yeah. Now, being a parent, right? You're a spiritual father, I will say that, or a spiritual mother. Compare that to being a, 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 a parent at your home. Mm. 
Because the Bible says, honor your parents in mm. the book of Ephesians, right? Honor your parents in the Lord. So um, then honor your mother and father. He said, this is the commandment with the promise. So the same word is used there, honor. So the question is, if you are a child mm. or if you have children, mm. how do you expect your children to honor you? Do you expect your children that when you open the gate for your children to lie down here on the floor <laughs> for you to walk on top of them? Because uh. you are so big that you cannot walk on the pavement here. Yeah. So now you look mm. at that because there's the same word. Yeah. The same word, honor, is the same word that is used in honoring yeah. the servants of God. Mm. So honor means to respect, which means um, I should speak to you in a manner that is respectful mm. and treat you in a manner that is... I cannot say if I'm honoring you as 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 as, as my leader, yeah. I cannot just uh, speak to you or, def you know, maybe disrespect you mm -hmm. or speak in a way that is um, disrespectful to your character or to your position or to uh, who you are, who God has called mm. you with, called you to become, rather. So, but it does not necessarily mean that I must then always be a, a slave uh, or in, the, in that sense, whereby I, I must always be a slave. So you look mm -hmm. at the children, how do your, your children honor their parents? Or how are children supposed to honor their children? But then it makes, it goes down the book of visions and it start, starts to explain. Mm. Right? It says also you your parents do not anger your children and yeah. whatnot. So it's a relationship. Mm. So honor is, on, respect is end yeah. at the end of the day. Respect is end. So you must put yourself or treat yourself or treat other people as well mm. in a manner that says, I want you to respect me. So therefore I respect you. Yes. Right? I respect you because I want you to respect me. Right? Respecting me, honoring me doesn't mean if you shake my hand, it means that you're, you're not honoring my anointing. Mm. No. <laughs> you can still shake hands. You mm. can still hug. You can stay, still say hello. Yeah. We can still stand in the queue together at McDonald's. Mm. We can still, you know, do same things together because that, that does not mean you are dishonoring me. Mm. It doesn't mean you are dishonoring me. But now if I'm saying to you that you cannot eat from the same plate that I'm eating at, mm. if I'm saying to you now you cannot park where I'm parking, mm. if I'm saying to you <laughs> that you cannot stand in the same robot that I'm standing, <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, because I remember I, once, I, once, I was once part of a church mm. um, for a very short time, earlier in my years. Mm. Uh, because after my divorce, I closed the church. Yeah. Only recently, I opened my ministry back. Oh, right? okay. But we closed them. But I used to do a lot of other outreach ministries instead. So I was mm. part of this other church for a short time, and I'll explain why for a short time. Because <laughs> after after church, right? It's a prophetic church. Um, mm. So after church, church comes out late. But after church, you are not allowed to drive anywhere. So the man of God must come and drive and disappear. Because, First, yeah, you cannot be driving behind the man of God. You cannot, you know, so things like that. I think those things are idol worship. Yeah, you are insane. making the man of God an idol. And mm. you, you, you are idolizing the man of God. Mm. And not only idolizing the man of God, we idolize ourselves, idolize ourselves so much that there are people in the church who are blessed. Yeah. They are, there are people who are politicians in the church, mm. people who are corporate principals, mm. people who are who are excelling in business, mm. in, the, in the media. Different but fears. now when they come into the church, I, mean, I think those statuses should remain outside of the church. Yeah. It is my personal opinion mm. that those statuses should remain outside of the church. Just because you are Beyonce, mm. right? Doesn't mean that you are Beyonce <laughs> in the kingdom of God. Talking about that, <laughs> most leaders choose people according to their status in the world. That is why to this day we find leaders in the church who are leading but their characters are so flawed but it is the hidden behind i'm paying a good tithe mm. I, I, i'm known in the parliament yeah. I'm, I'm good you, you understand Definitely. why why are pastors doing those mistakes because sometimes it's not only about who a person is mm. at church it's actually about who are they at home you know yes and um it's not a mistake Remy. Mm. It's very deliberate. They know why they are choosing those people. Mm. They want to build a status around them. You see a lot of uh, pastors posing with celebrities, taking pictures, attending their parties. Mm. That's why you end up having these scandals, whereby a pastor invited to a particular mansion in a private party. For what? <laughs> right? So now you are posting pictures with these rappers and, <laughs> and all of these things online. Mm. That does, what does that say about you? Because mm. your character, the Bible says that bad company corrupts, corrupts good, good character. Mm. 
So what does that say mm. about your character? Mm. So now, um, shortly, briefly, okay. what I can say is this. Mm. With as far as that is concerned, when a man of God starts once only associating with people who are famous and rich, mm. only associating with people who have certain titles in, in public sector. Yeah. You must understand that such a pastor only wants recognition. Mm. They want uh, fame. They want to be associated with the rich and famous so that they can be put in such places. But the Bible says that your gift will make room for you. Yeah. You don't need those connections. You need God to make a room for you. God is the best connector. God will make a room for you without having to sell your soul. Mm. As we are concluding our conversation, um, we are closing with this one. I know it will be a bit controversial. Mm. I wanted us to touch on the issue of couches in our churches, yeah, yeah. but that one we will come back to it. Yeah. Let's talk about balancing your personal life and your calling. I mean, we see a whole lot of now our pastors are marrying slay queens. Is it for the image of the church or is it what I want? <laughs> Doesn't what I want matter as you are a child of God? Yeah, that's a very controversial question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. okay. Well, let me start, start here. A beautiful wife doesn't necessarily mean it's a slay queen. Yeah, I mean, yes. Pastors are allowed to marry beautiful mm. women. But now, slay queens are people really who are of the world, mm. who are focused on glorifying themselves mm. and what they can gain from the kingdom mm. and not really what they can bring to the kingdom. Yeah. So if you're marrying a woman of God, a woman rather, especially if that woman is going to be given a title mm. of saying that she is the mother of the house or she is a prophetess or pastor or whatever, then she needs to have the character of a pastor. Mm. You cannot marry a wife whom you're going to call the mother of the house or whom you expect the church to call mama or whatever mm. or expect the church to call prophetess or elder or whatever, and she does not have the characteristics of such. Mm. So there must be a separation then. Mm. Let's say must separate between our personal life and our, unless if you are marrying your wife for the purposes of your own home and your own bedroom, mm. then that is fine. Then she does not need to represent the church. She must not come and stand in the pulpit. Mm. There is no requirement in the Bible that your wife must be on the billboards and the posters and stand. There's no requirement. Your yeah. wife as a pastor can literally stay, stay at the back, can even attend another church. Mm. Doesn't re there's no requirement in the Bible yeah. that the pastor's wife needs to be involved in the church. So if you want to, if you're attracted to, uh, to women like that, at least let them be godly. Mm. Uh, not the women of the world. Let mm. them be women who are after God's heart, mm. right? So, but if your woman is going to be a woman who's going to be on the pulpit, on the public platform, let be someone who has the character um, in, 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 in how they dress, in how they speak, in how they conduct themselves generally, mm. how they treat other people as well, and how they treat the scripture as well, mm. right? Because you're going to have now a woman who is still in the world, but is given the title of the pastor, and now... One minute we see them in the church, another minute we see them trekking on TikTok. <laughs> so now we don't know. <laughs> well, 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 wow. so there must be a separation between your personal mm -hmm. life and your calling. Mm -hmm. But also it's very important that your personal life, you must match the person that you are trying to be for mm. the kingdom of God. Right, so you right. cannot then say that I want to be a man of God, but I also want slave queens and strippers. Mm. Then that becomes a questionable character as a man of God. Oh, I enjoyed our conversation so much. And thank you so much for the wisdom. Um, where can people find you on our social media platforms? Yes, it's been a pleasure, uh, Queen Remy. Um, wonderful conversation indeed. Thank um, you. I'm a person who's very reachable. Uh, my name is Gift James Tim Kulu. Okay. And uh, letter J. So Gift, letter J, Tim Kulu. If you can say that, you'll find me on Twitter. You'll find me on Instagram. You'll find me on um, YouTube, you should find me on TikTok, you should find me on Facebook, everywhere. Mm. Like you can just Google Give James Tim Kudu, you should be able to find me. Thank you so much for that. And mm. after this conversation, I believe you at home understand the importance of the call to repent. Yes. It's no longer a joke as we are ushering the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I will see you in our next episode and don't forget to follow me on my personal YouTube channel, Queen Rami Talks. Until we see you again. Bye. Bye. <laughs>